Okay, everyone, welcome back to another Genshin Impact video, and so... Hey, you! Oh, what? Just both of you, over here! Oh! I've been keeping an eye on you for a okay. while now. Okay, I wasn't expecting this. But we're back playing Genshin Impact. I don't have my webcam on right now because I don't really feel like it. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, yeah, Paimon still has that on her face. That's right. If I'm not mistaken, you're also among those who wish to cut down the thorns and pursue the truth. No. And by the looks of it, you're not from Fontaine. Well, no shit. Right <laughs> but who are you? This girl. I want to I I think she's going to be a four-star character. <laughs> but I Have don't know. Heard of the Spina di Rosula? But she's one of the characters from Fontaine I want. And providing protection to solving conundrums. You name it. Spina di Rosula does it. I also believe like uh, next banner is going to be Nuvalet and then some other wolf guy, I believe. Which is kind of annoying. Yeah, kind of annoying because I have to wait two more banners. Or this banner and then the Nuvalet banner. Until I actually am able to get Farina. Which, which pisses me off. But um, whatever. I, Navia, have the honor of being its renowned president. Navia? Those who play by our rules call me boss. Over for attendant. Pleased to meet you. I didn't ask. I'm Merus. Demoiselle's various daily needs and affairs are under my purview. Again, I did not ask. <laughs> Hi, well, I am the second generation president. Malus and the others are still used to my previous title. Is Demoiselle. Should you prefer, boss, I will endeavor to use that instead. No need. You don't have to call me boss. Just Navia is fine. If you say so, <laughs> oh, shit. all merely trifling details. Never mind. Now back to the situation at hand. So you want to investigate as well? Right. I've always kept an eye on the serial disappearance cases. My interest stems from a matter back from my father's time. Okay. Uh, dude, click. What are you doing? Click. Judging from the look of things, I find Linny an unlikely mastermind. Exactly. Really? We think so too. That's why we're looking for clues now. Mm -hmm. Wait, how did you come to that conclusion? Intuition, naturally. My unparalleled intuition. Uh. <laughs> Serena sure was quick to point the finger at Linny without any decisive evidence whatsoever, wasn't she? Yeah. So that's not uncommon for her. If you remember, the justice had to interrupt her and ask if she was pressing charges just to keep her from getting carried away. Anyway. A trial begins the moment someone levels charges. And, of course, there was no way Farina was going to back down in that situation. Uh huh. More like you just don't trust the Hydro Archon. Well, what's your opinion? Just admit that she can be interesting at times. But liking her doesn't mean that I'll blindly agree with her. Well, when you put it like that. <laughs> I've answered your question. Now, it's time you answer mine. Why? Wait a minute. Well, I say it does. But don't worry. You won't hear any pointless questions from me. In your opinion, do you think it's right to treat a trial like it's an opera? Well... Not always. Doing so makes it easy for the truth to fall by the wayside. Something serious like a trial shouldn't be treated like entertainment. Yes. Ah, he's silver and loose. I told you they'd be different. Most astute of you, demoiselle. I too think that the traveler's response was most excellent. Yes. No matter how wonderful the script or how fervent the audience's expectations may be, the trials that go on stage here must be based in fact. And if that can be done, boss, then... All right, that's quite enough, Malus. Anyway, I like your answer. You pass with flying colors. Okay. I need to make cool. some preparations. <laughs> Following which, our joint investigation shall commence. You two shall be my assistants. How dare you, bro? We are the attorneys here, okay? You are our assistant. Oh, uh, well, I can be the assistant. Sure. Or your companion, if you like. I'm really not that fussy. I think you're missing the point, Paimon. Seems you've already agreed then. But I believe that Demoiselle's intuition will be instrumental in uncovering the truth. You wish to save a friend from false accusations, and we wish to unravel the disappearances. In this sense, our goals are aligned. Not really. <laughs> you have a point. Huh. You're quite the talker, aren't you, 
mister. No. Hey, what do you think? You seem like you've got something on your mind. I have nothing to add. <laughs> oh, alrighty then. <laughs> we'll okay. be making some preparations first. Just be sure to let us know if they start revealing Lenny's tricks. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Yup. Okay. Now we can finally investigate. And then we're going to do a we're going to do a trial. There's something here. Look for clues inside the opera house. So I talk to you? Yeah, okay. Sorry, but no one can freely enter or exit the opera house at the moment. If you wish to leave, you must register your identity with us first. No, we're not leaving. We're representing Linny and Lynette as attorneys, so we're investigating the case. Were you always guarding this entrance? After the Chief Justice gave the order, everyone coming in or out must undergo a strict inspection. Uh-huh. Okay. So, the missing girl couldn't have left from here. At least, not from that point on. What about during the show? I doubt there was much opportunity then, either. How can you be so sure, hmm? Well... Because I was in charge of security near the entrance at that time. I couldn't see Linny's performance from here, which was quite a shame. Just my luck. But still, I did not abandon my post. And I stayed put no matter how loud the applause was. If someone had so much as even approached the door, I would have noticed it. Let alone if they had tried to leave. Uh-huh. We Melodines are good at that sort of thing, you know. So, okay. It's safe to say the girl couldn't have left through here. No oh, shit. <laughs> oh it shit. Uh, sure. Useful info. Entrance and exit to the opera house. Yes. Uh, that's that. Now let's head into the opera house. Or the courtroom or whatever the fuck it is. It's a freaking courtroom, bro. Where we're in the courtroom. So we got a uh, something over here. I guess we talk to these people, right? Cut that stuff running into the walls. I'll uh, talk to you. I see that you're investigating the area. Well, it just so happens that I'm interested too. If you find any new and interesting leads, be sure to share them with me, all right? Yeah. Cat, what do you want? Then why don't I tell you my hypothesis first, the way I see it? It all started with that loud thud. The thud? Oh, you mean the sound that happened during the countdown? Yes, exactly. It wasn't terribly loud, but I suspect that most people heard it. Which that everyone was awaiting the results of Lenny's trick with bated breath. So no one paid it much mind. And now that the incident has happened, the thud has become an important clue. Mm. Which what thud? That makes sense. I don't remember. So, it's been like a couple days it? since I've last played Genshin. <laughs> or since I last made the video. I'm of but the opinion that it may have I don't been know. the sound of Lenny's accomplice. Lynette, perhaps. Jumping atop the water tank or something like that. And when the pyrotechnics went off, she cut the rope. Sending the water tank crashing down. Oh, no, the wasn't rope the was burnt. Too loud for that? Perhaps the balance wasn't right, leading to a particularly rough landing. She wouldn't have cut it because, like, it got burned. But then, wouldn't the water tank have started to swing a bit in that case? Oh, that's true. Hmm. I suppose I must reconsider. Hmm. Yeah. That does remind Paimon, though. What was with that sound? A strange sound during the magic show. During the switching performance, uh, there was an audio audible thud that many audience members heard. I, I don't remember that, <laughs> but either way, let's head uh, down to here. Well, uh, the actual crime scene right here where, where bro died. Yo, know, just going to attack like that. Okay, we gotta uh, examine right here. This is where the box was uh, struck. If the cow weren't inside the box at that very moment, he might have dodged a falling water tank. How did he even- wasn't he outside? Didn't it show him like move out of the way or whatnot? I don't get- I, I don't- yeah, <laughs> whatever. The rope looks pretty durable. How can it be burned through so quickly by fireworks? So either Linny didn't realize this was a safety concern or... Yeah, I'm just looking at where the rope snapped. Oh, oh. what? Look, this bit is made from different material. Mm -hmm. Most of it was burned away, but there's still a little bit of it left. A type of flash cotton. It seems to be flammable. So if a rope meant to hold something was made with that kind of 
material in it, then that means. Wait, why don't you write all this down? Let's take notes. Special rope. Uh, this rope was used to suspend the water tank. It suddenly broke when the fireworks were being launched on stage. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's investigate. Or I, I already did that one. Let's, let's talk to Esmond. Go ahead. Have a look around. In the end, we're both after the truth. Yeah. Okay. So where's our where's our next clue? I guess it's here. But I already interacted with this one. Oh, I can do that. Uh, it tells me what I completed. It's basically like Danganronpa, I guess. Well, I don't know if Danganronpa tells you what, what you, you completed, but it tells you what you can interact with. Oh, this location has also been cordoned off because the Magic Troop members are currently mm -hmm. considered prime suspects. The investigation team is still collecting evidence. The mm -hmm. seats were all booked in advance, so we were able to deduce the missing woman's identity by checking the guest list. Could you tell us who she is? Sure. It's not like this is confidential information. <laughs> we will publish it later anyway when we petition the public to help us find the missing person. Her name is Halsey. She's a painter from Fontaine who's made a bit of Halsey. a name for herself. Apparently, she wasn't a regular at the Opera House, but she'd been feeling some pressure with her work lately, which made her decide to come see the Magic Show. The Magic Troop members all claim not to know her. We have looked into her social connections. It seems that she has no personal grievances or conflicts of interest with the suspects. Simply put, she wasn't related to the Magic Troop at all, which matches the features of the previous serial disappearances. Were the victims of previous cases also chosen at random? That's how it seems to us, in any case. Apart from the fact that they were all young women of around the same age range, there really weren't any other connections between them. Yeah. Okay then. Uh, thanks for letting us know all this. So if you do happen to see the missing girl, please be sure to contact us. I highly doubt that will ever happen. That we get to the bottom of these disappearances. Yes. Okay, information about the missing lady's identity. Yep, we got that info. May shown. Info may shown. Click E. Check mark. Gotta do this. The broken magic box was less left on the scene after the guards compl uh, completed their investigation. Looking at it now, the water tank must have struck it really hard. Because that's what happens if something heavy gets dropped on another thing something i don't know <laughs> i think this is the last thing has some new findings turns out there's an issue with the random number selector after all see i told you what if the machine picked some big guy's seat you think the murderer would have still made his move then sorry to interrupt but we're helping lenny and lynette with their side of the investigation what were you saying about the number selector there's something wrong with it you're trying to help them <laughs> That'll be a tall order. Lenny used the machine to pick a random member of the audience during his performance, right? A lucky girl that later disappeared. Well, yeah. we thought there might be a serious problem with the machine, so we had it taken away for further inspection. It turns out that the seat number it picked wasn't random at all. The machine picks that same number every time. I'm sure you already Damn. know that you have to make a reservation in advance to get a seat, regardless of whether it's a trial or some performance. Linny knew who would be sitting where from the very beginning. That much checks out. Linny reserved our seats for us, too. Let you see why I was saying it'd be tough to make a case for Linny. Thanks, sorry for bothering you. <laughs> Even though it's bad for Linny's case, Paimon had better write it down. Yeah. Okay. Random number selector. Yup. Uh, it's apparently apparently picks the same number every time. But you never know. Whatever. Where do we go now? Yeah, okay. Hold up. Let me, let me come do this real quick. Get all of the... Uh, claim all of my stuff over here. Oh, shoot. I clicked the wrong button. Uh, right here. Okay. Uh, come over here. What's over here? I still got an event to complete. So maybe after this video, I'm just gonna complete that event. So I wanna get the Bennett. I wanna get the Bennett. I gotta, I gotta do this. And I wanna get the Bennett. Because I kinda... Kinda, kinda just wanna Bennett. Because why not? And then I might also try uh, Fremnet out. Because, you know, why not? We got mail. And it's just, it's just Mora, bro. I have too much Mora. I don't need any more Mora. Stop giving me Mora. Like, my guy. I hardly ever use my Mora. And whenever I do, it's not even, like, like the, barely the makes a dent in my Mora supply. You're aware. I will be monitoring your actions and making notes as necessary. Very good. Thanks for being so agreeable. I'd pull a rose out of my hat as a gift for you if I could. 
You may spare the pleasantries. I'm just doing my job. You were right. Uh, where'd you come from? Uh, me? <laughs> I'm Spina de Rosula's guardian angel. If you've got a problem, I've got the firepower. <laughs> Sorry. I got a little carried away there. Call me Navia. I'm a partner of theirs, and we'll be helping investigate this whole situation. And these are my companions. Would you mind if they join as well? Fine by me. Oh, new helpers? I would be most grateful. Well, let's just say we're tagging along. It's not every day you get to see the secrets behind magic performed on such a large scale. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I appreciate your kind interest. Come with me. We'll be heading below stage. Okay. We're going below stage. Wherever below stage is. <laughs> below stage? Yes, a world of secrets is hidden beneath this magic box, prepared specifically for this switcheroo trick. But before okay. I reveal everything, you should have a look first. Notice anything strange here? No, it's a box. I notice a box. I'm not trying to be dramatic. Oh, what? Remembering uh, the details of a trick will help dead you understand worm. the methods uh, used to okay. more easily. Weren't there balloons and other decorations here? Where did all that go? Huh. Good eye. That said, you're still far from discovering the answer. The back of the door isn't the uh, same. The back? You mean the inside of the door? What's different about it? Paimon didn't notice anything. Very good indeed. I thought you might not be able to catch that, given that no, you were sitting uh, in the first row. Oh, I don't notice that. I, the back yeah. Of the store <laughs> oh, okay. are now gone, replaced by a smooth wooden board. Uh, I see. So, if you put two and two together, what do you get? There's another box inside this one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, let's go. I'll tell you how it works as we head down. Okay. It's an elevator. Oh, Ooh. So there was a passageway under the magic box. And this passage linked the two boxes together. <laughs> I knew you'd figure out most of it as soon as you saw this place. The two magic boxes are positioned right above the two entrances of the <laughs> tunnel. See this flatbed trolley? The box with the lucky audience member in it would be shuttled over to the other side using the trolley. Okay. We can raise and lower and even rotate, ensuring that the box will face in the right direction. See, so that's the purpose of the box inside another box. Precisely. The inner box would descend after the audience member was put inside and be moved along the trolley, all while the outer box would remain on stage as if nothing had ever changed. So yeah, Once okay. The box was lowered. The trolley would store some energy through <laughs> this device here, with which it would complete the rest of the steps. The audience member would only be able to feel some slight movements in the dark, and by the time she walked out, she would already be back on stage. What about your side of the trick? Oh, I uh, didn't click it. <laughs> A phonograph operated by Lynette was used to achieve that effect. My assistant and I had already scripted our conversation beforehand. When the countdown began, I had already gone to the opposite box via a tunnel using that ladder. Okay. Where was she? I was in the mezzanine space in the back of the box. Oh, interesting. That's how we were able to coordinate Lenny's lines with the assistant. And by the way, I was the one who walked out of the box at the end. <laughs> we are twins. All it takes is a change of clothes, and no one can tell who's who. That's. I want to go back and look to see if there's like any like Lynette you know. Can perform it. If you can notice anything different. So that's how it all works. Wow, every detail you revealed was more amazing than the last. Guys, so I realized that I had a different screen on, so none of the stuff that I just went through actually showed. Yay, I investigated this entire freaking, this entire thing down here. So, uh, I don't even, I can't, look, the young woman is gone, but her clothes are here. What does this mean? So it just gives me these, these, these little notes. A shattered vase and water. Something happened down here in the tunnel. Yep, 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 yep. We will, uh, come, come back to all of this stuff, uh, you know, whenever we start the trial. But we got the, uh, we got a, a tunnel. The perpetrator could have left through here, but uh, bringing the young woman with them would have proven tricky. Yep. And then we got the trolley, which is uh, the trolley is crucial for transport uh, transporting the magic box to the other side of the... Uh, yeah. 
Yep, they, they would have done that. Then I was also mentioning that there's a, um, over here, there's this right here, the exi uh, this. This should be, uh, the control device for the trolley. It seems to be able to operate automatically. Um, okay, yeah, hold up. Um, this, uh, it seems to be able to operate automatically. I don't remember it saying that before, but yeah, whatever. There's not much, uh, there, there was a couple of bit, bits and stuff that was down here, but I, uh, I, I lost it all because... I forgot to chain, change my, uh, change what I had on my screen, so it wasn't showing Genshin, it was showing something well, else. We've ascertained the state of God. The scene. Whatever. Let's find a place to sort out our findings once Malus returns. Seems uh -huh. to me that there are several things that don't add up here. Apologies for the wait, demoiselle. So, what did the guards say? Did the criminal escape through the vent? They believe the odds of that are very low, since the vent leads to the Opera House's basement. The guards have checked the area carefully. No one left through the basement during the performance or after the incident, and no one was found hiding there. So they uh -huh. can't like a secret chamber then. You know, like the kind you usually see in novels. It would seem so. They could well, still be in the tunnel, you know. Halsey's disappearance and it's Cal's not like we death. looked in there. Inexplicable. No wonder Farina was so confident in her accusation. All the current evidence points toward Linny and Lynette. In other words, no, the no, there's like no evidence that points towards them at all. Considerable progress. <laughs> because none of them were even like in the like Lin Linny was in the box. Lynette was in the box. And yeah. <laughs> That's right. This is how a trial goes in the Opera House. During the proceedings, the Chief Justice and the Oratrice will hear statements from both sides. The Oratrice will That's too? Right. This is how indemnidium is produced. Statements from both sides, the defenses from attorneys, witness testimonies, and even the audience's emotions will all be projected on the Oratrice. To mm -hmm. put it simply, it's as if the Oratrice has its own will and is a judge in its own right. This also okay. precludes any kind of favoritism on the part of the Chief Justice. <laughs> and not that this has ever happened anyway. Once both sides have finished speaking, the Chief Justice will make his final decision. This too will be used by the Oratrice as a reference. Then, okay. finally, the Oratrice will be consulted by officials. The result it returns is the will of justice itself. Mm -hmm. So that machine is the one that actually decides? In practice, there is very little difference. Both have always come to the same judgment. Which is why people have great faith in the Chief Justice. Ah, yes, the guards also asked me to convey that none of us will be allowed to leave this place before the trial. Oh, oh shit. Hello. I dropped something. <laughs> chosen as the twins proxies. That makes us persons related to the case. Uh, yeah. They're concerned that we might be colluding with outside parties. Or that we might find outside help to disrupt the case. And even if that were uh -huh. not, it could prove problematic if we happen to spread key information about the case ahead of time. I'm ready to break out at any time. Kinda think they have a point. That said, are they providing food? <laughs> I just hope you don't mind the lack of options. I'm afraid that catering to all tastes is not in the cards, nor is any guarantee of balanced nutrition. Now's not the time to be so picky. In that case, let's just sort out our findings together here. Pity. I was yeah. hoping to take, I mean, oh, what better way to properly think through our findings than over some tea and sweets? Breaking out suddenly doesn't seem like such a bad idea after all. Paimon. Just kidding. Paimon will still do her best, even if there are no snacks. Hmm. What do you mean, no snacks? Bro, look at no her snacks. thighs. If we cannot buy some, then we'll simply make some. <laughs> Bro, look at her thighs, though. Dude. What's with all these freaking Fontaine girls with thick ass thighs, bro? Farina? And then there's, uh. There's her. I fucking forgot her name already. I don't, I don't know her fucking name. You know, they're fucking thick, dude. That's portable? Looks massive. How are you carrying it? Huh? Navia. Okay. Bro, how is this portable? It's giant. Where were you carrying this? This is not portable at all. 
Must be a uh, Spina di Ro Rose Rosola thing. I don't fucking know French. Navia methodically handles the ingredients. Those, what, are, what are these? Macaroons? They look like macaroons, but they seem like they look like burgers. Like what the heck? They're massive though. Even if they were macaroons. Really? Okay. I was applauding. And I was giving encouraging smiles. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's not quite what Paimon meant, but okay. Kimmo was just thinking. Aren't you worried about getting your fancy dress dirty, beating egg whites, and baking like this? <laughs> well, I don't think it's carved in stone anywhere that fancy ladies can only read books, sip tea, ride horses, and play the piano. I just really enjoy making snacks. Don't underestimate beating egg whites, by the way. It's a real arm workout. You also need to beat them to just the right consistency, or your macarons will crack. Yeah, they are macarons, bro. They're massive! <laughs> They're fucking massive, bro. What do you mean only three? Or what do you mean only three? It'd be like, it'd be set, it'd be alright if you said only three? If they were like normal macarons, these are fucking massive. So like, three is too much. <laughs> This is Demoiselle's favorite. Strong black tea with a floral fragrance that clears the mind and lifts the spirit. Why don't you take a break as well? Concern. I'm merely doing as I should. Uh-huh. Do as you should harder. I don't fucking know what that means. All right, then. <clears throat> Down to business. As Paimon mentioned previously, the tunnel seems to be something of a secret chamber. However... We can assume that Linny and Lynette were not alone within it. Some criminal also occupied its sealed confines. Yes. The could have committed the crimes, of course, but they lack any logical motive. Exactly. That's what I said. Everyone was watching. Oh shit. Uh, do, what? Oh, so apart from the twins, um, we're left with two other people: the missing girl and the deceased. We heard during the performance could indicate some altercation between Halsey and the criminal in the tunnel, resulting in the shattering of the vase, the discarding of her clothes, and her abduction. God damn, my battery is Perhaps low. The criminal thought that since she was chosen from the crowd, she would be too easy to identify if she was still wearing the same clothes. Simon thinks that makes sense, but the real trouble is there's no evidence that this third person even exists. <sighs> None of the clues we found thus far support the existence of this third person. Huh? The only people left to consider are both technically victims. Whether it's the missing girl, Halsey, or poor Cowl. Huh. Yeah. They're both in on it. <laughs> modifications to the magic props in order to murder Cowl before making her escape? But she had no way of knowing how the magic trick worked. Uh, that's right. And even if she had tampered with the setup, she would need to understand the entire trick to pull it off. Or she was just that type of person and she opened the door before uh, they told her to open it, you know? Nor does she have any motive. The guard said that she has never had any dealings with the Magic Troops members. Were we not thorough enough in our search? From the sound of things, this is turning into an impossible case. Your macarons are amazing though, Navia. They smell great! They're nice and crisp and super sweet. They are my <laughs> specialty after all. Bro, eat we'll them all already. I see you've already had five of them. <laughs> five? Pime! These are massive. How do you have five of them? Five? Oh, that can't be right. Pime only got three. Honest! Please don't worry about it. <laughs> At my age, a few less sweets might mm. actually be a good thing. Greedy is one thing, but Paima knows how to count. Well, I've had one. Besides, <laughs> Paima knows that if she ate too many, then others wouldn't have enough. Fine, if you ate them, you ate them. Oh, it's fine. Everyone knows how much you love eating. Wait, eating beautifully, Paima? Oh, thank you. Bruh. If Paima ate a few <laughs> extra macarons, then may they turn into stone in her stomach. All right, oh, I get it. Oh, okay. Well, might have gotten too engrossed in our chat and eaten them by mistake. No big deal. It's definitely not me. My plate still has, still has two macarons on it. What are you doing? Making sure everyone gets three macarons, of course. 
Oh, the real there's really no need to do that. Exactly. We don't want to trouble you. As you wish, demoiselle. And I have the egg, sugar, and almonds. Bro, for real? Uh, oh, this really is your hobby, huh? Like my guy. <laughs> Navia does a second round. However, the discussion that follows does not yield much well, progress. That's it for snack time. I'm going to have another look around the area. Okay. Don't know what we're looking for yet. But we I still got the time. The case over again. Would be awkward if you got all tongue-tied on stage during the trial. All right. Thanks for your help and for the snack. Oh, it was nothing. A small task for the Spina di Rosula. Silver, Spina, Bruce, it's time Spina to di Rosula what? I'll be back if I find anything new. Probably the third person being involved. Okay. Yeah, I don't right. know. We gotta time wait to until the trial. Yeah, hold up. Let me come over here real quick. And yeah. But I reached level 50 last time. And it's, it's pretty poggers. So I'm stuck at level 50 now. Until I complete the ascension the quest. Or the ascension do domain or whatever the fuck. That, that bullshit. That, that, the, pro the, probably like the worst domain, the worst thing in this game right here. Adventure rank ascension 4. Gives you only 2, 2 acquaint fates, 100 primo gems, and you die tens of thousands of times. I sure do love that. I love doing that. But yeah, guys, I'm going to end the video here. Next video, we are going to be doing, we're going to be doing the trial. Because we're already like about 40 minutes into the video. Um, yeah. Well, uh, it's going to be shorter than that when I actually edit it. But I've been recording for about 40 minutes. And I have other things to do today. Uh, or in the next couple of hours because it's currently 9 at night. But either way, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you have not already. And I will see you guys next time. Peace out and bye bye